Hi, the purpose of this video is to teach you about OneNote and how you can use that at school to be better organized and do all of the things that you would traditionally have done with a paper notebook. And to show that, what I've got here is the sort of thing that I would have had when I went to school and some of you probably have had when you went to school. So let's just have a look at it to start. So inside here, I've got an awful lot of stuff. To start with, I've got uh, a notebook, um, like I would have had for some of my subjects at school, just a notebook by itself. I've also got a lever arch section or a, a ring section with a section dividers, a section that I've probably have for each of my subjects. So that's all divided out. Um, at the back, I've got uh, some graph paper uh, because always I needed graph paper when I was at school and you guys probably do as well. And some plastic pockets so I can put handouts that teachers give me and, and all those sorts of things. I've also got a ruler and uh, a bunch of uh, pens and textures because we've got something to write with and all that sort of thing. Um, highlighters because highlighting is just so important as a strategy. And also uh, a calculator, always got to have a calculator with you. Um, a spare notepad because you're often got to have notes of various things. Um, a stapler to staple things. Um, uh, eraser tape because I'm always making mistakes and a glue, um, some glue because I need to be able to stick things into my book as well. So you can see I carry a whole lot of stuff and, and all of that can be done digitally. And so the purpose of today's video is to actually show you how you can replace all of this with OneNote on your computer. So during this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to make a notebook. So how to make uh, one of these or a section like this. I'm also going to teach you how to make each of the individual sections how to make pages within the notebook, uh, how to change the page type, so you've got line paper or plain paper or, or, or graph paper. Um, I'm gonna teach you how to choose different pens, so how to get different pens and highlighters and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to teach you um, how you can insert space within documents, one of the things you can do better than, than actually with an old school notebook. I'll teach you how to use a ruler. Um, I'll teach you how to do a screen clipping and inserting printouts and things, so all of that. And then last thing I'll do is I'll teach you how to use quick notes, um, taking notes in a notepad, uh, but then also some calculator functions as well. So let's get on with it. So when you open up OneNote, you start off with the My Notebook, and most of you would only have this notebook or maybe you've made a couple of other notebooks. But it has a how-to guide, it's got some information about it, and then also you've got some links there you can click on to, to look at various things. What I want to do first though is actually walk you through the whole interface. So over the left hand side, what I've got down here are all my notebooks, and you can see I've got quite a lot. For each notebook then, across the top, you'd have different tabs, and the tabs you can see along here. So the notebooks, each of those are like the, the big spiral bound notebook or the big folder that I showed you just earlier. And then the tabs along the top, once we get a few more tabs, these are the sections. So what I want to do now is firstly, let's go about making a new notebook. So to make a new notebook, all I do is I go to the file menu and I choose new. And then I'm going to save this one on my computer because that's what we're recommending that you guys do at the moment. I'm gonna give this a name. I'm gonna call this um, my example notebook. And then all I do is I create the notebook. You can see now that my example notebook has been created. And now you can also see that it has been started with an individual section. To show you where it is, my example notebook has come all the way down here, the bottom in my list. If I wanted to move that, all I've got to do is click on it and drag it, and I can drag it up to wherever I want to. So if I wanted it to be my first notebook, I can just let it go at the top there, and now my example notebook's there. To navigate between notebooks, all I've got to do is click on another notebook, and it will open up those other notebooks that you can see there. I've got different notebooks. So I'm back in my example notebook. Now you can see that it starts with one section and it has one page in that section. I can give that section a name. I'm just going to double click on the title up here and I'm going to call this um, section one. If I want to add another section, all I have to do is hit on the plus symbol here and you can see it gives me a tool tip which is create a new section and now I can give it a name. So 
I might call this my class notes. And I might make another section, which is handouts. And I'm going to make a third section, which is going to be entitled homework. And I would suggest that you need to think about the sorts of section uh, headings that you need. If I want to delete a section, all I do is I right click on it. And now I can choose delete. And it tells me, are you sure? And I'm sure, so I'm going to delete it. So you can see here, I've got class notes, navigate to my handouts, and then to my homework. The next thing I want to do is show you how to make a page. You can see each section starts with a page already there, and it's an untitled page. I can give it a title, um, and so this could be my um, lesson one notes. And notice that over the right hand side here on my page uh, layout, it's given it a title. If I want to add a new page, I just hit the add page button and it will give me a new page. And I might call this lesson two. And this lesson might have been about note taking. So I can give that. And notice that also comes over here. I can also make a third one now. And just to show you, I'm going to pick up my stylus and I'm just going to write the title in here now, which is going to be lesson three. And this might be on organization. And I want you to see too that it, the, over the uh, right hand side here, it's even recognized my handwriting and put that in as the title. To navigate between those, all I've got to do is click on each of the pages and you can see that I can go between each of those pages. The next thing I want to show you is how to change the background. You can see I've got graph paper on this one. I like the graph paper, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my view menu and notice that I've got the rule lines and I can change it from none, which would make it blank. And I'm just going to go up to the top of the page so we can see it. Or I could change it, go to any single one that I want to. So there's different line types. So there's some just straight lines or I can go to the graph paper, which I like. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back to my graph paper. But you can choose whatever that you want and there's different sizes in there. There's another option I want you to see in here and that is always create pages with rule lines. I have that selected and I select this one so that every page I create has this background. I like that as a background because that really helps me. Once you're actually writing on a page, you can see that the page is unlimited. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw in the bottom right hand corner. And you can see here, I've just drawn a little square. And I'm going to use the pinch gesture. So on the screen, I'm pinching and zooming in. And you notice that what I'm happening is I can actually zoom out within the document. I'm going to draw in the bottom right again. I'm going to pinch again and zoom out even further. And so you can see that I get quite a lot of space. Once I zoom in using the expanding pinch gesture, now I can just use a single finger and I can navigate around the page and move it around. It's really important to be able to know that you can zoom in and zoom out just using that pinch gesture. There's also another button I want you to know, and that's at the top right here. Notice that it says full page view. At the moment, we can see the pages down the right hand side, tabs across the top, and then notebooks down the left hand side. If I press this double headed arrow, it gets rid of all of that and gives me the entire screen to write on. Now to switch between notebooks, I can use this drop down menu, um, or I can also just hit the normal view and all my menus will come back. So I've already started drawing on the page, but let's show you how we can do different sorts of annotation. So if I go to my draw menu, I've got a range of tools here. I've got standard um, pens, two thicknesses, a thin and a, a thick black pen a thin and a thick red, blue, green, and I don't know what color that one is, gray by the looks of it, and then four highlighters. If I also then hit the drop down, I get a range of a huge number of colors and thicknesses. This is where we can get, have access to all those pens. Just to show you, I'm just gonna choose a red pen. And firstly, we've got to remember that pens are, are pressure sensitive. If I press lightly, I get a thin line. And if I press heavy, I get a thick line. Really important to know. It's also important to know how to erase. So I can go up to the draw menu and I could choose an eraser to actually erase. So here's my eraser, I select on that and now I can erase my text. You can also erase with a gesture. So I'm just going to pick a pen again. I'll choose a blue pen this time. 
And the gesture is straight backwards and forwards, left to right three times. So if I, it's, like, it's called the scribble out gesture. So if I go backwards and forwards three times, one, two, three, it erases. It doesn't matter which way I go from. It really is important that you know that because if you're coloring in horizontally, you'll sometimes erase things. The other way to erase, you can actually, in some styluses, they actually have an eraser at the tip, at the opposite end to the tip. So you just turn it upside down and erase, and some have a button. You just need to check with your stylus to see which, which sort it is that you have. The next thing I want to show you though, is you can also insert space. So I'm just going to really quickly just um, fill up my, my page a bit. And I've just done squiggles for the ease of demonstrating. But now I can go to the insert bar, and there's a button here called insert space. And I can put this in and notice it gives me a line. And if I click and drag now, it just inserts some space and moves everything down. It also works the other way. So if I go to insert, insert, uh, insert space and come in from the left hand side, notice that I get a, a, a line so I can move everything across. Um, and so I can move and insert space anytime I like. You can't do that on paper. So I think that's pretty exciting. I'm just going to make, I go back to make a new page now. And I'm going to show you how to rule a line. If I go to my draw toolbar, you notice I've got a whole bunch of tools here. So if I want to just rule a straight line, I've got a blue cut selected, I've got the straight line. I'm just going to click on the page and I can just drag that line and I can get a straight line. So you can see very, very easy to rule lines. The next job is to show you about screen clipping. Screen clipping is incredibly useful because it allows you to take an image or a section of a screen from anything or anywhere else and insert it into a page. So let's show you how to do that. So what we do is we go to the insert bar and now I want to insert a screen clipping. And I want you to notice what happens. Firstly, everything OneNote minimizes and it goes to the other application open. In this case, I had a Bing search that I'd already conducted, and you can see I searched for OneNote. But notice the screen's grayed out. Now with my stylus or my mouse, I can just select the area by clicking and dragging that I want to go into OneNote. I'm just going to click and drag this little section here. It's about OneNote, and it gives me the icon. Once I've done that, notice that it has gone onto my page. Really importantly, it has told me where I got it and when I got it. And now I'm able to draw and annotate all over the top of it. So if I wanted to say it's all my notes on all my devices, I can then highlight that and notice that I'm highlighting an image that I've taken from somewhere else. So I think that insert is really, really fantastic inserting a screen clipping. The other really neat thing that I can do is I can insert a file as a printout. So what I'm going to do is make a new page and now I'm going to insert and I'm going to do a file printout. And it asks me what file do I want to insert? And I'm going to insert a document that I have worked on previously for some training I've been doing. And when I hit the insert button, notice that it prepares my document and then it prints it into my OneNote as an image. And you can see now I've got a link to the original file and then I've got the document itself. And if I scroll the page down, you can see I've got every page of that document. So now I've been able to, rather than having plastic folders, I can put any documents I need into OneNote and then I can draw all over them. The other really cool thing about OneNote is it's got a thing called Quick Notes. And I'm gonna show you that really quickly using a different method. So there is something called the Send to OneNote toolbar. And you'll notice that in my Start bar, here it is sitting down here. When I click on that, it gives me three options. It says I want to insert a screen clipping, which I've just showed you. It's got Send to OneNote, which only works from uh, Internet Explorer, Excel, PowerPoint, or Word. Um, and so at the moment, because I'm in OneNote, that is grayed out. But then I've also got this other thing called a Quick Note. And it's like having a little notepad wherever you go. When I say a new Quick Note, notice that now I've got a little notepad that's come up on the right hand side here and it's on top of whatever I'm doing. So I can take some notes in here and at the moment I've got a highlighter selected. So I'm just going to go down to my draw, ink styles, go to just a black pen and I could just take a few little notes and notice it's a tiny little piece of paper sitting on top of everything else. Um, and I'm going to put number two in here just to do that. When I close that, it looks like it disappears, but it tells me down here it's in my quick notes section, which is below my list of notebooks. And so down the bottom here, I can see my quick notes. 
And when I click on that, notice that it opens up on that quick note and now I could file that where I wanted to. I'm going to click and drag my note and I'm going to put it into my class note section. So now when I open my class notes, notice that there's a new note over here and there is my quick note that I took. The last thing I want to show you is that OneNote is able to do simple maths. So I can't do that using my stylus, but if I just type now and I want to know what 23 minus 12 was, and I press the equal sign and then the space bar, it gives me the answer. If I wanted to know what 12.34 multiplied by 79 was, press equals and the space bar and it will do that. So it's got a built-in calculator so you can do calculations as well. The last thing you need to know is that OneNote doesn't need to be saved. I can close OneNote now, and if I open it again, it will open up exactly where I was, exactly the section I was in, and everything is saved automatically as you go, so you don't need to worry about saving. So there you have it. All of this that you would have had once upon a time, your notebooks, um, spare paper, pens, pencils, staplers, calculators, the whole lot can be replaced with a tablet PC. Um, newer Toshiba's, it could be uh, the older HP model. Um, all of these will do everything that you could do in the past and actually a whole lot more as well.